Hello, good morning. Oh my gosh, I have so much I want to share with you guys. I don't even know how to contain it, so I'm going to just wait for a couple of people to log in. Good morning, good morning, good morning, good afternoon. I don't know what time it is for you, but just good morning. Um, if you guys are just coming in, I want to know where you're from. Good morning, good morning, good morning. I want. I have something I want to say. I have something I want to speak over you guys' life this morning, and I hope that you hear it, and I hope that you take it. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Ah, man, I am so fired up. It's not like I haven't even gotten my workout in. Like, I don't need this is me pre workout, right? Good morning. If nobody has told you good morning, you are blessed to hear it from someone that appreciates you. Good morning. Good morning from South Africa, from Orlando, Massachusetts in the house. Um, also, if you guys are anywhere from up north, that is up north of Florida. Is it any fall season? Like, is it fall season? Like, is are the leaves out? We don't really get the different things here. And we're trying to take a trip. So, is I just want to know in your area, is it cold, hot? Like, if somebody can help me out with that, because we want to go up north. We're going to be going up north somewhere. Manchester, Morocco, South Dakota, um, Chicago, VA, Eastern Time. I'm on Eastern Time. I'm on Eastern Time. Seattle here guys by the way English uh, is not my first language so when you guys are just putting the acronyms of your state I'm so sorry I, I may not know it right not yet Virginia not yet still summer okay is it too hot right same PB jump the street Boston and Maine not yet for fall when does fall usually hit you guys because hopefully next month because that's when we're going morning to you but good night for me Wales Virginia is beautiful in the fall I need to go to Virginia Mississippi I have been to Mississippi south texas hot yeah we we're not going to texas or san Louis, but we appreciate you okay i just want to speak this over your whole life because i just got off a call with my team that went over our scheduled time but man the holy spirit was in that and all i can say is i hope that i can pour that some out into you this is all i'm gonna read to you guys listen to me carefully if you're struggling to move forward in obedience to god right or you're struggling to make a decision whatever it is to you right now i don't care if that's making a decision whether to send your schools your kids to school with or without a mask to get the you know the the job or whatever you guys want to call it whatever you're struggling with to make a decision on that you know is in sitting right in your heart and you need to stay obedient to God and maybe you don't even know it's God maybe you have something in you right now that you're like man it's just woman intuition like I just feel like something isn't sitting right but I'm being bullied or I'm being forced to do something I don't know what that is for you I have no idea I am just going to speak and if you receive it you receive it and I hope that it it stirs something in you today that allows you to be at a sense of peace even if your whole life is in freaking shambles right now, right? And you guys are more than welcome to share. So if you're struggling to move forward in obedience to God, you can put it to whatever, in obedience to making your next move, in obedience of quitting your job because they're forcing you to do something, in obedience to do something, you don't need bigger faith. Yup, I said it because it says it in the book and we just talked about this this morning. You don't need bigger faith. You just need to realize how big your God is. The more faithful and strong you believe him to be, the more you are willing to depend on him and less on yourself and less on the government and less on the decisions that your mom has and less on the cheap opinions of people. I can give you something practical. Seven years ago, I started my business and I had so many people in my ear because they didn't understand the opportunity that was given to me. So I said, I'm not going to let you snatch it. This is in my mind just because you can't see what's in front of you. I know because I was given it. Did I know that I was going to make this a full-time business, six figures, work from my home, not have to worry, you know, if my kids are sick and running fevers and who's going to pick them up from school? I didn't know any of that. I didn't know any of that. All I knew was that I am not the type of person to do what the 99% does. And I will go against the grain if I feel it in my heart, if I feel it in my gut, and I will always listen to that without realizing that all along... That was the Holy Spirit that all along I was being guided, but because he won't 
force his way in, you have to really pay attention. I didn't know that I was moving in faith. So this is for people in here that you're like, nah, am I, am I open to hear nothing about God? Like God has failed me. Let me tell you, God has worked in my life. God has saved me in times that I didn't even know that he was working. I didn't even know until I connected the dots backward. I'm like, man, I just took a step and he said, keep going, right? So when you are standing, if you don't stand for anything, you're going to fall for everything. Get out of the news, get into your word, your life, your mindset, your finances, your business, your marriages, your everything will be so much fruitful, even if the rest of the world is going crazy and in chaos. And I am so fired up from this morning, the conversation I just had with some of the women on my team, like, wow, Lord, thank you. So let me finish what I'm saying. The more faithful and strong you believe him to be, the more willing you will be to depend on him. Your level of faith will always be tied to your perception of God. If your perception of him is faulty, your faith will be faulty. If your perception of him is on point, your faith will be too. You don't need more faith. You don't need more money. You don't need more this. You don't need more that to fix a problem you're having. You just need to have a more comprehensive and accurate view of the faithfulness of your God. So then I had this, sorry, my eye is itching. So then I had this, I had this thought. I'm like, wow, if, 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 if God made us out of him, right? Like if he, if he created us, the thing is, is when we're doubting ourselves because we can't believe that his power is in us. I'm like mind blown this morning. I'm like, wow, I can't keep this to myself. Somebody out there needs to hear this because right now you're like, I'm not worthy enough. Could I do this business? Can I work on myself? Maybe you're being trash talked by a spouse or maybe your job is giving you a hard time because it's going against everything in your fiber that you believe in. Follow your intuition. Follow your gut. Pray and seek because that will never lead you the wrong way. It won't. It won't lead you. And maybe let's say that you you fall for, I don't know, the enemy's plans, whatever you want to call it, your boss's thing, the, the government's thing, whatever it is that, you know, what is happening. I don't know what it is for you, right? If you're struggling to move forward with a decision, if you're struggling to move forward in obedience with what you know you should be doing, you don't need bigger faith. You just need to have that little bit of faith to take it and say, I'm going to stay obedient to this. I'm going to stay obedient to, you know, you need to leave that man because he's clearly cheated on you 500,000 times. I knew I needed to leave my ex because alcoholism ran in his family. And the last time I saw him, he was drunk trash in the middle of our new apartment. I said, if I put up with this, I'm going to end up with this and I'm not doing it. I'm not willing to risk it love the feeling the emotion because if there was love you wouldn't do this if it was love we, we this wouldn't happen this ain't fruitful and just because it's good for you or just because you like it it doesn't mean that it's good for you so wow it was just so mind blown this morning and our one of my business partners took us out in prayer and i was like in tears i'm like i receive everything because sometimes i feel like we give the enemy too much credit like oh you know it's the enemy's fault that my bank account is dry no girl it's your fault it's your fault that you don't know how to manage your finances. It's your fault. This is talking to myself. It's your fault that you put your family in this situation. It's your fault that you decided to have, you know, the kids that you, it's not, it's not like it's a faulty thing for having kids, but you decided to have them. You made the choice. You decided to do this. Did you ask higher power or were you just going off of the decisions of the people that, you know, you wouldn't really trade your life or circumstances or situations for? That's how I look at my life right? That's how I look at my life now. I, there's so many distractions. I talked about this in my stories. I don't know if it's still there. So I hope that you guys go listen. I don't know what you're struggling with to move forward. And the first thing you need to do is become so self-aware of what it is. Because if you continue to say, oh, you know what? We mask, but we're not willing to heal. I, I wasn't willing to heal on certain things in my life. I'm, I'm still real hesitant to even give them to God. Right. And then that just that just kind of like I'm like, why am I hesitant when you you've led me out of every situation that I had before? 
And sometimes we think, well, well, we, we, I had a conversation with someone and they were like, well, why, why does God, why does God allow, you know, kids, you know, they were telling me this because I have a child, uh, you know, young kids to die. And I'm like, I don't have the answer to that. I don't have the answer to that. I haven't had a real conversation sitting up in heaven. Like, yo, can you tell me what's happening? All I can tell you is that I have to have faith that there's bigger purpose for the things that do happen. Because I can tell you what scares me. I can tell you my fears. I can tell you all that. But if I focus on that, that is what will continue to grow. Instead of focusing on the things that I can maybe have a say in, which is my efforts. And whatever you're doing, your marriage, waking up, putting social media, stop comparing yourself. Uh, the efforts of um, working on yourself. You know, right now, I haven't seen that one person. Not one. All I see is like FDA bullshit, uh, talking about the job and all this. I haven't seen like the whatever you want to call it, upper management, I guess we can call the government now. I haven't seen them spread anything about like, uh, you know, we should probably cut down on obesity. You know, you guys really should manage your weight because that can lead to extra health issues and comorbidities. There's some things that you're born with that you can't prevent. My son was born with pulmonary issues, but you better believe that I will do everything in my power to make sure that this boy is healthy. Because if he wasn't, it's only gonna be worse. I don't see them talking about that. I don't see them on saying, let me print millions of dollars on uh, giving uh, doctors or whatever more resources to to talk on obesity or to talk on or, or take some shit out of the supermarkets that you know, you know, shouldn't be there because it's only killing more people because it's not healthy. I don't see them doing that. So I'm just like. Oh, okay, so you're trying to push and force and bully people into something. Why don't you talk and educate about prevention? Why don't you talk and educate? I'm not saying that healthy people aren't going to pass. I'm not saying that healthy people, I get it. I get that 100%. I worked in an ICU even way before before this crisis. What I'm saying is, is I started to notice, wow, comorbidities, that has a deeper meaning. Did you take care of yourself? How, are you talking about like, you know, how smoking is? I, I know that I know that people know this, but a lot more people don't. There's not enough education. So they're buying into the fear instead of buying into the faith of what could actually happen if they just decided to make some life changes and behaviors. So that's why I said, if you're struggling to move forward in obedience, it could be something simple. You go to Panera and instead of saying... I want a bag of chips, you choose an apple. And right then and there, that is your decision to say, I'm going to step in bigger faith because I'm going to break some generational curses for my family, for obesity and all the other bullshit that runs here. And that's what I told myself. I said, my bloodline, we're not getting, we're, we're, not, we're not calling diabetes on ourselves. And if it happens, how it happened to my dad, because it runs in his family and it runs in my mom's family, I know that I did everything possible to be healthy enough to say, you know what? It's not because of something I prevented. So I can't be getting upset with the government or other people or people, whatever, that I'm looking for resources if I'm the one that's shoving the shit down my throat. Because a lot of things in life, I realize now, I'm like, wow, this stems from this, this stems from this, this stems from this. And until you can become self-aware, then you're going to blame everything else because we are masking what we're not willing to heal. We are masking it with medications. We are masking it uh, with relationships. We are masking it with whatever it is that you do every single day. This goes with me too. I mask it with distractions. I get distracted sometimes and I'm like, oh, let me just, let me just do this, right? That's, that's masking it because I'm not willing to, to work on what I need worked on, right? So stop the problem from the source. So that's all I wanted to say, you guys. If you're struggling to move forward in obedience, whatever that is to you, man, you don't need bigger faith. You just need a more comprehensive and accurate view of the faithfulness of your God. And if he says, I'm in you, then sometimes we just think we're not worthy enough to say, man, God is in me. I read this quote the other day that there's this like leader in, in another organization that she's very adamant about telling people I'm here because of the Lord. Like you are not going to give me a mic and there's no way that I can't let God come out of my mouth. And some people will look at you and they will say, oh, you know, that's a Jesus follower or leader or that's a girl that always talk about the Lord. Man, thank you. Because for so long, I felt like I had to hide that. 
right? For so long, I felt like I couldn't open up about that because it was going to muddy the lines between business. So what? So what? If I could bring you closer to your faith, if I could bring you closer to expose to you the truth of certain things that I've been able to been exposed to, good faith is rooted in a good God. So you just don't really need bigger faith. You just need to know your firm foundation. You feel it in your heart. You've been given the spirit of discernment. You've been given the spirit of self-discipline. Self-discipline your discipline instead of self-disciplining your fear. Because most people right now, what they're doing is that they're self-disciplining and they're feeding and they're giving food and they're giving more life to their fear and their distractions instead of starving their distractions and actually feeding their faith and saying, you know what? I may not know what's going to go on tomorrow. I don't know what's going to go on. I don't know what's going to go on in 10 minutes from now but what i'm going to do is i'm just going to take a step forward and i'm just going to get plugged in and i'm going to find the community i'm going to be healthy for myself and my kids one of them decided i was going to send them both back we all tested negative yesterday when i had to get us all tested negative i was like i already knew this but if it makes if it if it because i had to send the results to the school i said if it makes them feel better i will do it you know, I will do it because I respect it. I would understand. I would want to know if my child was exposed to someone and if I had to keep him home or not. So I, I you know, I, mess, I messaged the nurse, but decide, my seven-year-old decided to wake up with a fever this morning. And I said, I know there's a stomach bug going around, so that's how we're going to treat it. I'll monitor you for everything else. But right now in this house, we're not worrying about other things. I said, because I know what I've done, I've, I know who I've been around, and I know what I stand for. And I can't let the little distractions of the enemy feeding me fear, because that's what's going to happen. And sometimes we give him too much credit, and it's ourself. Like, we start worrying like this or that, or I don't have the money if the car breaks down, or how am I going to put food on the table if I have to keep the kids home? Man... I'm telling you now, if you're struggling to move forward in obedience, start the business because there's no better time to do it than now with everything that is being forced upon people. That's just me. Start getting healthy because there's no better time right now to work on yourself and on your health and on your mental health, not just getting the body snatched, on your mental health than now because it's so easy that if you are standing for nothing right now, you're going to fall for everything. I'm telling y'all now. My family has a bloodline of alcohol problems only six weeks ago. And I got strangled to death by my pop who was intoxicated all the time. I hope you're well. And I hope that, man, that he, that spirit goes and just, man, it stops with you. You bring what, about what you speak about. I'm just reading you guys' comments. Thank you for sharing. You're very welcome. You're very welcome. I used to be so afraid to share and talk about this because I are actually going to want to hear or if I'm going to say it right, look, I, 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 I'm just new to my faith three years ago. I'm just new to f discovering things, but I'm also f have this fire in me that I'm like, I'm not going to hold that in. Why would I hold it in? Why would I not tell people? Uh, what, wh why would I hold? So why, you know, the people that are withholding information and the people that don't share things with you, I don't just mean the government. I mean, like maybe in your business is that that stems from fear and worry that they're insecure about themselves. Because I see I see other people that have lots of money in the bank and they share everything. Why? Because they know who their foundation comes from. They know where they get their fruit from. And it doesn't matter if that person copies them. They know you can copy, but the pace won't be the same. Because unless it's blessed, it won't even matter. It won't even matter. So if you're struggling with something, you don't need to be your faith. You have it already in you. Use it. Ask God for discernment. Say, you know, I hope I'm making the right move. And if it's not the right move, man, like, lead me the right way. My husband says it all the time. There's no right or wrong decisions. It's just a decision. Once you make it, you really realize if this was the decision that you needed to make for you. And if you make it and the doors open... You already know that came from above. And if you make it and the doors don't open and you're forcing, 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 2021, the rest of the year, I'm not forcing nothing. I have people that hit me up and they don't reply. I'm not forcing nothing. I'll follow up. It's my job. I'm still going to do what I have to do. But me, to force my valuable self on you and me, I know what I have to offer. I know what I have to bring to the table. So until the person is ready to listen, until the person is ready to receive, until the person is ready to start, you can't force anything. 
All I do is I educate and I give what I know. And am I wrong a lot of times? Absolutely, right? But I'm not forcing anything. I'm not forcing relationships. I'm not forcing clients. I'm not forcing money in the bank. I'm going to let it flow. Because with flow, there's overflow. And that overflow will trickle into my business partners, my kids, my spouse, the people around me, the people I text, the people I pray over. I am not forcing anything. I'm not forcing it. I, I look sometimes I look at my business, which is one of the, the most, I guess, challenging things in my life because I'm like, wow, right? And I look at it and I'm like, I'm not forcing this. Like I'ma just do what I know to do. I'm going to continue to learn. I'm going to continue to grow. And God knows what he's doing. But please allow me to make sure that I'm not forcing and that I'm just letting things flow. Period. Let it flow. Let it flow. And for me, coming from a control freak, because I am and most women are, you you already know. Admit it to yourself. Right? Um, That's very challenging. That's very challenging. And I told myself, you know what? I'm going to give it up. I'm going to give it up. I'm going to stop worrying so much about what's not there. And I'm going to focus and I'm going to grow what I know I can do. What I, know I'm, what I know I'm good at and what I know I can help people. And for me, I used to get bullied. Oh, my gosh. I used to get bullied so much about my loud mouth when I was younger. Oh, you have a loud mouth. I didn't know English very well. I would mix up my words. I would get in trouble. I would get sent to the office. And now, and now I see why. God needed me to have a loud mouth. Because I needed to speak for the people that aren't willing to do it for themselves or that can't, right? And now I see it in my seven-year-old sometimes and I'm like, hey, hush, be quiet. You, you get taught, you know, you, you, you have kids and you show them the first couple of years of their life to stand up, to be loud, to talk. And then you spent the rest of their lives shutting them the fuck down. Like, how is that making sense? Shutting them down, telling them clearly not to, is, there's a difference between keeping them safe and, but telling them to be quiet, tell them not to act out, like, my, my, sometimes my daughter sings and it's so annoying piercing through my ears that I'm just like, baby, sing, girl. Just, just keep singing. Because she's going to grow up saying, man, my, even my own mom told me to be quiet. And that's why I'm shy. You're not shy. That's just a label you decided to believe about yourself. Period. So, I am out. I don't even, this was my workout. Like, I'm, I'm like sweating under here, by the way, you guys. Um, anyway, I hope you guys have a beautiful day. I am actually going to post this. I wasn't going to, but you know what? I was like, somebody else needs to hear it. So if you feel like I can't help anybody else financially right now, um, I, I, I can't help anyone because I, I can't even help myself. You know what you could do? Go reshare it because I'm going to post it because somebody on your feed is going to pick it up and it's going to change your whole mindset and it's going to change your whole life and hopefully it impacts them and it impacts you to completely give yourself the opportunity to say, man, I, I'm, I'm struggling to move forward in obedience, but I don't need bigger faith. I just need to trust more that what I'm doing is right and it's the truth. So see you guys later and um, that's it. Have a blessed day. Bye.